Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am Harrison Graham. We are live here on YouTube and over on Rumble. I'll be sure to give some shout-outs to everybody watching on both platforms. Appreciate you guys for supporting the show. If you're over on Rumble, uh, that is awesome. Also, go follow us over there, rumble.com slash bears now. Of course, here on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash bears now. Hey, we made it. Fan-led mock draft. I've been telling you guys the past couple of days, you guys are going to make the pick for every single round. Go vote on the live poll. Also, get your comments flowing. Who do you want at round two? Pick number 39. I've got the draft simulator up and rocking here for you guys. So make the pick. Kenyon Green, the offensive lineman out of Texas A&M. Vote in the live poll. Also type KG. Christian Watson, the North Dakota State wide receiver. Uh, type CW if you want him. Jahan Dotson, the Penn State wide receiver. Type JH. And then if you want Tyler Smith, the Tulsa offensive lineman, go ahead and type uh, TS. We are using the Pro Football Network mock draft simulator. So if you're saying this is unrealistic, well, uh, you can blame them. And really, it's, it's up to you guys today. Y'all are making the picks, uh, so keep that in mind as well. We'll give you guys a few minutes to make this pick. Also... We have some super chat incentives if you want to dictate how the pick could go for each round. If you send in a $1 super chat, your vote counts double. You'll get two votes on it. We got the chat sports data team uh, tallying all the votes here, doing the math for you guys, so we're good to go on that one. $5, you get 15 votes, so it's kind of better bang for your buck there. For $20, you get 50 votes. And then for $50, if you want to send in a $50 super chat, you make the pick. If your guy isn't going to win, send in 50 bucks. You can make the selection out of those four players. Those are the Super Chat rules. And uh, as always, Super Chats are appreciated. And uh, we really uh, do uh, appreciate all the donations. And we'll still have live Q&A today. So Super Chat to get your questions on as well. Shout out your city. Let us know where you guys are watching from. We'll kind of sprinkle in fan-led mock draft throughout today's live show. We're not going to go every pick back to back to back to back. Uh, before we get to news and rumors, we'll reveal this first pick. Uh, so continue to get your votes in. But let us know where you guys are watching from. Derek is in Chicago. Chi-Town says, I don't understand. What do you not understand? I need to know. 50 bucks. Someone made the first pick. Here we go. So should we go ahead and reveal it, I guess? <laughs> All right. We'll get to – we may have to raise the stakes here a little bit. That didn't take long. Uh, someone made the first pick. Vibin' with the dogs. 50 bones. Kenyon Green, the offensive lineman out of Texas A&M. Uh, should we? All right, I'm being told, uh, Vibin, you got in for half off. We're raising it to 100 bucks. So, PD, you've got listicles open. Change that menu for us. $100 uh, to make the pick from now on. Vibin, congrats to you. You made the first selection. Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. So we'll talk about him just in a moment. I'll continue to shout out some folks uh, given their city, Chicago. Uh, Edvis is in Chaparral. We got Anderson, Indiana from Scott. Ken says Dallas. Alan Mack says Dublin. Uh, what's going on, Alan? Darnell is in Chicago. Kenosha from Lucas. Grand Forks, North Dakota. Dallas from Ken. Chester, Pennsylvania. And then Wisconsin is where RJ is. Uh, appreciate that as well. Let's go ahead and talk about the first pick in this fan-led mock draft for just a moment. It is Kenyon Green. Thanks to Vibin's $50 Super Chat. Uh, listen, this is the pick I would have made. I think he's a plug-and-play starter at right guard on this offensive line. I actually mocked him to the Bears in my last mock. He's projected as a late first, early second, so it's conceivable that he could be there at 39. I would say out of every 10 mock draft simulators I run, he's there about a third of the time. So not a great chance that he'll be there, but in this mock he happened to be there. So I definitely think it's possible. Uh, I like him. He's got versatility. He played tackle and guard at Texas A&M. Uh, so uh, I think this is uh, would be a really good pick, and it would fill a major need for Chicago. Kenyon Green, the first selection in this mock draft. We'll get to round two, pick number 48, here in just a few moments. In the meantime, who is your favorite player in this NFL draft? Uh, let us know in the comments as uh, we'll get a few more shout-outs going here in just a second here. 
uh, as we project uh, forward. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Olave from Vibin. Uh, I obviously love Chris Olave too, but uh, I just don't uh, think he's going to be there for the Bears. Uh, Matthew says Olave as well. Traylon Burks, baby. Uh, that would be uh, that would be a nice uh, nice little piece. That is uh, for sure. I'm being told Matt Eberflus is talking currently. Uh, Justin Fields talked earlier, uh, so we'll uh, talk about that a little bit. David Montgomery for DK Metcalf. Someone says Christian Watson from Tyler. Uh, Trevor Penning from Tim Everett. Uh, Zion Johnson from Al Mack. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming up with players here. Trevor Penning from Vibin. Alec Pierce from RJ. I like that one quite a bit as we uh, continue here. Keep those votes coming in. I'm coming up with picks for the next selection here. Give me just a second. Let's see. Ooh. Still on the board. Alec Pierce from RJ. Zion Johnson. Let's see. We got Traylon Burks. We'll talk about Traylon Burks here in just a second. All right, PD, if you're listening, I got the four picks for the next uh, pick available, round two, pick number 48. So he'll get those in there for you guys, our executive producer, Matthew Peterson. Uh, we'll get to the next question here. A couple more. Tyler Linderbaum from Alan Mack. Lucas says Brian Asamoa. Uh, I like him as well, the linebacker out of Oklahoma. All right, NFL trade rumors are circulating around these three superstar receivers, A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, and Terry McLaurin. If you had to pick one to trade for, who would you trade for? Type A.B. for A.J. Brown. I told my producer to say type A.J. because A.B., I just the Antonio Brown vibes, but it's all good. We'll go A.B. for A.J. Brown. Type D.S. for Debo Samuel or type T.M. for Terry McLaurin. Uh, Jack, if you also want to make the new live poll, the options are in the doc. Uh, yeah, you, you can go ahead and uh, get them in there. A.B. for A.J. Brown, D.S. for Debo Samuel, and T.M. for Terry McLaurin. Live poll for the next picks are up, so you can go vote on that. We'll talk about them in a sec as well. Scary Terry from Lucas. Vibin says Terry McLaurin. So does Ware. So does uh, Andy. Noah says Terry McLaurin. Darnell says Debo Samuel. Gregory says Anton or let's see, A.B.'s throwing me off. A.J. Brown, we got a Debo Samuel from Ken McKenzie. Uh, Orion Patel says Debo Samuel. What would it take to trade for Terry McLaurin? Well, we'll explore this deeper uh, in our news and rumors portion. Should the Bears sign Miles Boykin, uh, the third-round pick in 2019, the receiver out of Notre Dame, so he is local, got cut by Baltimore, but I liked him coming out. I think for cheap I'd be interested. Type S for sign, type P for pass. S for sign, P for pass. Should the Bears sign Miles Boykin? Vibin says sign. Andy says pass. Agent says sign. Let's go to that after this. Matthew says pass. Joe says sign. Tyler says sign. Uh, Mo says sign. Scott says pass. Sean saying pass. Ooh, we just got a super chat. Let's go to this super chat. Two dollars from Lucas Prang. Uh, so this will be uh, you'll get two votes on the next or. Uh, Two votes for this next one, Lucas. Uh, Harrison, Jahan Dotson, it surely isn't falling to 48. He actually did in this mock draft, which I don't think is crazy realistic. But, hey, someone's going to fall. Here are your options for round two, pick number 48. Quay Walker, the linebacker out of Georgia. Roger McCreary, the corner out of Auburn. I think he's more of a nickel. Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver out of Penn State. Still there. I don't find that very likely, but, hey, you never know with these simulators. Bernard Raymond, I like this one too, the offensive lineman out of Central Michigan. And then remember uh, the pick at round two, pick number 39, Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. So you've already gone offensive line once. These are the options here. Let's show the Super Chat menu real quick, the updated one. Uh, and then we just got another Super Chat as well. We'll read that real quick. Matthew says, love your work. Keep it up. Is there hope for Linderbaum at 39? And what would you think of the pick? If he's there, I would uh, definitely be interested. I think kind of like Kenyon Green, it's possible but unlikely. I'd say less likely than Green. I think if one of those guys would fall to 39, Green is more likely. We haven't fixed this yet, by the way, uh, Jack. These are still the wrong amounts here. Uh, Matthew, appreciate the five bucks. Uh, if you would have made a pick, that would have counted for $15. So 
it is what it is. All right, if you love the Bears, like this video. We're about to get into the latest Bears news and rumors here. And then, of course, we'll answer all of your questions, and we'll continue to uh, progress with our Bears fan-led mock draft. We'll work that in throughout today's show. So I appreciate you guys uh, for tuning in. Like the video. We're at 49 likes. Let's get to 100. Let's double that number. Let's get to 100 likes here, and then uh, we'll kind of uh, get this party uh, started here. Yes, like this video uh, if you love the Chicago Bears. Let's see. Is he out of there? Like this video. 73 likes. Let's get to 100. Come on. Hit that thumbs up icon. We're at 77. Brandon has liked it. C. Frammy has liked it. RJ, Michael, lots of likes coming in here. Appreciate that uh, as well. Vibin has liked it. Corey has liked it. Alan Mack has liked the video. Vibin has as well. Waiting for those to come in. Steve. All right, we crossed over 100 likes. All right, uh, it is what it is on that front. All right, here's what's coming up here on Bears Now. The latest news and rumors around the Chicago Bears. Plus, live Q&A. Use hashtag Bears or Super Chat. We're still going to answer all of your questions. And uh, fan-led mock draft will continue to make picks throughout uh, round two, pick number uh, 48. Options are on the board. Jahan Dotson, Quay Walker, Roger McCurry, Bernard Raymond. Make the pick right there, and let's get into today's show. You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's show. Speaking of the show, here's what's coming up. Traylon Burks, he made a draft visit with the Bears at Hallis Hall. Could he be an option for the Bears either at pick 39 or as a possible trade-up target? We'll explore that in a moment. Also, could Chicago trade for a superstar wide receiver? A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, all set to skip offseason workouts. Could Ryan Pohl swing big and bring in one of those players? We'll see. And then Miles Boykin, maybe more of a fallback realistic option. Uh, the 2019 third-round wide receiver got released by Baltimore. Could Poles have interested in the athletic freak out of Notre Dame. We'll talk about all those topics and more coming up in just a few moments. But first, I want to remind you, this is why you subscribe to Chicago Bears Now. The best analysis, opinions, news, rumors, live shows, mock drafts, free agency, Q&As. Uh, we do it all for you guys. Daily videos, sometimes more than one video per day. Hit that sub button. We just crossed 46,000 subscribers. I appreciate it. The road to 50K is well underway. YouTube.com slash Bears Now. Before we get to those rumors, Justin Fields, let's start there. He actually met with the media, held a press conference today because the Bears have a mini camp uh, that is underway starting today. Uh, here were some notable takeaways I uh, found uh, from this press conference. Number one, he understands this is his team. He sounds like a leader to me. I think he's more comfortable. Last year was awkward when you know they promised Andy Dalton would start, and then you know Fields was in and out of the lineup. The whole naggy debacle, that was awkward. Uh, also, a, a couple of things I found interesting. He's working on his fundamentals with Luke Getze. Uh, there were reports that he's trying to, uh, you know, shorten his, uh, his throwing motion, but also what he spoke to directly today was working on his drop, you know, his threes, his five-step drop, seven, all that stuff, fundamentals, footwork, all that. Been training with Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. He confirmed that. Uh, that they spent some time in the offseason together down in Georgia. He's also excited for who the Bears draft, even called Chris Olave my guy. Now we'll see if that means anything. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't think they're going to get him. But I think he's more saying, hey, I love the guy. Uh, eh, I'd love to play with him too. Uh, and then he also mentioned this. I don't think he got much out of Matt, Matt Nagy. He didn't say so specifically, but he was asked, uh, did Matt Nagy put you in a good spot to succeed last year? He said, I don't know. He also said that uh, him and Luke Getze have not studied much of his film at all from last year. They're flushing the Nagy tape. I think that's very, very clear. They're moving on to 2022. Thanks, Nagy. Hashtag thanks, Nagy. Get it flowing in the comments. Uh, like I said, three-day minicamp starting today. So Fields and the boys are out there getting some work in uh, out on the practice field, which is, uh, which is exciting. First time we've seen that uh, with this new regime. They've been having, you know, weightlifting sessions the last couple of weeks and classroom work, uh, but kind of the first time we'll get to see these guys, you know, run around a little bit and, uh, you know, get acclimated on the field. 
Who's excited to see this new Bears offense? Because I know I am. I'm fired up to see what Justin Fields can do here in 2022. Type me down below if you are excited to see the offense in 2022. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Luke Getze cooks up for Justin Fields. All right, let's get to those rumors that we teased a little bit ago. Will the Bears draft Traylon Burks? I'm going to elevate this to two smoking Jays. I think it's at least a decent-ish possibility. The fact that they brought him in on a visit to Hallis Hall, I think speaks at least a decent amount to the interest level, right? Visited Hallis Hall on Monday, according to reports. He's expected to go round one, but there's been some rumors, some chatter that he could dip out of the first round and fall to the second round. I think you know, it's at least possible, right? Everyone can't go the first round. Every receiver, you know, it can't be 10 receivers that go in the first round. Somebody's going to dip. Maybe it's Traylon Burks who didn't, you know, test super well because we get obsessed with all these testing metrics, which I'm not saying they're not important, but I turn on the tape and this guy's running away from Alabama cornerbacks. That's all I need to know. I also know that uh, this would be a steal at 39. I don't think he'll fall to 39, but like I said, weirder things have happened. Just look at this offseason. It's been a bizarre offseason in the National Football League. Uh, if Traylon Burks is available, I think this would be a home run selection for Chicago. Uh, dynamic weapon that can play outside. He can be a big slot. You can line him up in the backfield from time to time. Physical. He runs away from defenders, too. Now, he doesn't look blazing fast, but he's so big and powerful, and he gets that acceleration going. Uh, I saw someone compare it to Derrick Henry, who ran a 4.54 in the 40, and Traylon Burks ran a 4.55. Derrick Henry on tape runs away from defenders, both in college and in the NFL. So does Traylon Burks. Why are we getting obsessed with Burks' 40-yard dash? I've seen him play live plenty of times. He is absolutely electric in the open field. And let's be honest, the Bears need more weapons, as we continue to discuss over the last several months. Darnell Mooney, good player, nice piece. I think he's a guy uh, to work with moving forward. I like the addition of Byron Pringle. But if you could get a guy like Burks in here to be your number one, number one A, one B at least, Next to Mooney, Pringles, your number three. Everybody slides back a spot. I think that makes this offense really, really fun and really, really exciting. And I think this is the type of prospect that Luke Getze uh, would have a blast with. You know, that Kyle Shanahan influence offense where you can utilize guys in different ways, maximize their strengths. I think he would fit in Chicago really, really well with what they're trying to do moving forward. Now, you look at the Bears draft picks. Obviously, uh, if you think you may have to trade up for Traylon Burks late into the first round or early round two, say, you know, Burks doesn't get drafted round one. Maybe you're thinking if you're Ryan Poles, okay, maybe I need to get up to 33, 34, uh, you know, on the second round. Uh, you know, you could do that, but you only have six picks in total. So you would have to weigh, you know, cost value, right? Like, do you want to uh, ship out one of your extra picks when you already don't have that many? Is Traylon Burks worth trading up for for the Bears? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Would you trade up for the Arkansas wide receiver if you were Ryan Poles? Get your votes in, Y for yes, or you can type N for no. Lots of wide receiver discussion today. Could the Bears trade for a superstar wide receiver? I'll go one smoking J. It's not completely fake news. It's barely true. It could happen, uh, but I do think it's unlikely. Uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter uh, reported this yesterday, and this kind of sparked the trade rumors around Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown, and Terry McLaurin. As Schefter says that they are all not going to participate in their team's on-field offseason programs because they want new contracts at this time in the offseason where – Obviously, wide receivers have been getting uh, – explode. The, the market has exploded, he says, which obviously is true. Uh, Schefter also added this when it comes to Terry McLaurin. He said McLaurin is going to attend Washington's offseason program, but he won't uh, actually, you know, do the on-field stuff as he continues to work through contracts. And that's what this is about. These guys are entering a contract year, and they want that financial security, especially with – how much the wide receiver market has exploded this offseason. Now, a lot of this focus turned on A.J. Brown because he sent out a couple of cryptic tweets. Quote, I'm a diva and a bad teammate all of a sudden. LOL, okay, do what you have to do then, and so will I. And then he said this, they switch up quick. Now, is he talking about the Titans fan base? Is he talking about the management Who's he talking about? If he's talking about the fan base, it's like, well, we know that. Every fan base has toxic fans. You know, they DM and tweet at players, you know, you effing suck. You know, uh, you already make a ton of money. Just show up and be a pr good teammate, blah, blah, blah. But if he's talking about front office management, like, he, you know, they're not willing to pay him right now. 
that could lead to potentially a trade happening. I, you know, that at least becomes a possibility. Now, ESPN's Diana Rossini says the two sides are working on a deal, but until a deal happens for these guys, I think it's at least a chance that some of them could get dealt. We'll talk about this a little bit further in just a moment, but I want to take this time to tell you guys to follow us on Rumble as we are live both on YouTube and on Rumble. I encourage you guys to follow us over there if you haven't already because, A, it helps support the show, and, B, you can catch other content creators over there, more sports, news, politics, tech, and business content that you can find. It's free and uncensored, by the way. Uh, bonus Bears videos from time to time as well. If you want to see more of me, follow us on Rumble, rumble.com slash bears. Now, that is the place to do it, and a cool feature of their app, if you're listening on your phone, you can actually uh, have it playing in the background. Like, you could listen to this video right now, minimize the app, and, you know, text your buddy. It's not going to pause like it would on YouTube. Rumble.com slash bears. Now, uh, cool uh, platform that we're publishing our videos on. Okay, let's get back to these star receivers. You kind of compare them one by one by one. A.J. Brown, these, this is all through three seasons, by the way, 185 uh, receptions, almost 3,000 yards, 24 touchdowns. He certainly led the way in that department in touchdowns. Uh, Debo Samuel, who's missed the most time with injuries, still has 167 for 2,600 yards and 10 touchdowns, but you factor in the rushing component he brings. He rushed for, I believe, eight touchdowns this year. And then Terry McLaurin, who quietly is just kind of an assassin, man, 222 catches, over 3,000 yards and 16 touchdowns. He is an absolutely fantastic route runner. Uh, he sneakily might be the best pure receiver on this list. I love all three of them. They all do a little bit of different stuff, but let's be honest. The lack of a first-round pick makes a trade difficult, right? You could trade a future pick. You could trade both seconds and maybe your third if you really are desperate. Maybe you could throw Robert Quinn at one of these teams. But uh, in reality, there's going to be teams that offer a first-round pick for these players, and the Bears can't do that unless they want to trade their first-round pick next year, which I don't think Ryan Poles is in the business of wanting to do that at this time. But you're in charge and you're saying, hey, you know what? I just want a star receiver with Justin Fields. Pick one to trade for. Type AB for AJ Brown. Type DS for Debo Samuel. Or you can type TM for Terry McLaurin. All I know is all three of these dudes are studs and they would all make the Bears better. All right, next rumor here, sticking with the wide receiver theme. Sign Miles Boykin, who got released by Baltimore on Monday. Let's re-elevate this one. Two smoking Jays, people are talking, and uh, a lot of those people that are talking uh, are me and people like me uh, on Bears Twitter. Uh, this caught my eye when the Ravens released him. Now, I know he kind of got phased out of the offense last year and Lamar Jackson missed time, and, you know, things got weird in Baltimore. He certainly missed some time with injuries, but – this is a guy that is talented. He's got good size and speed. I like that combination there. Uh, plus, he's not going to cost you much, and I think Ryan Poles would be intrigued by that. Okay, take a chance on a guy that was a third-round pick a couple of years ago, uh, tested well at the Combine, and uh, went to Notre Dame, by the way, so he'd be coming back close to an area he's familiar with. I liked him coming out of college uh, because he was 6'4", 215 pounds, and ran a 4'4", in the 40, uh, and his testing numbers as a whole were fantastic. At Math Bomb on Twitter, by the way, great follow. Uh, these were kind of his testing uh, metrics here. Uh, if you don't really know what any of this stuff means, you may have to kind of zoom in to kind of uh, read it clearly. It's different categories, 40-yard dash, shuttle, uh, bench, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, only didn't test well in the bench press, which is that red highlight. But if you see a lot of green like that, green is very good, and he was green across the board when he tested. Again, testing's not everything, uh, but we do know this. Ryan Poles, Matty Eberflus, they like fast guys, physical guys, explosive guys. He's all three of those things. Uh, so doesn't mean he's going to be a great player. He's certainly been very inconsistent. I will say these were his first two seasons before barely doing anything last year. I think he had six catches, um, but seven touchdowns his first two years in an offense that uh, featured, you know, a power running game with Lamar Jackson and those running uh, backs, almost 15 yards a catch. He's flashed. He's shown potential. Then he gets hit with the injuries last year, started the season on the pup list, I believe, or on IR. can't remember which, but – he missed the first six or seven games, played nine games in total, and uh, wasn't a starter anymore. They had gone in a different direction. Uh, reports uh, say they tried to trade him, couldn't find any offers, so they cut him to save $2.5 million. But I look at what the Bears have, and I'm like, okay, after Darnell Mooney and Byron Pringle, are we sure Miles Boykin wouldn't be the next best receiver on this team? I think there's a decent chance he would be. I think he could be with Equini or could be better than Equinemius St. Brown, Daz Newsome. Those guys haven't proven anything in the NFL. Neither has Boykin, uh, but uh, we've at least seen some flashes from him, whereas Newsom's done nothing as a receiver. And St. Brown, 
slight flashes as well, <clears throat> but he's had a few more years than Boykin has, five compared to three. So cheap, compete, compete with St. Brown. Probably is like wide receiver four, assuming you draft someone else. I like it, man. One year, one and a half million dollars, bring him in. I think he's an intriguing enough player that's still young enough uh, that he could show something. Should the Bears sign Miles Boykin? What do you guys think? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Uh, I'm open to it. I'm definitely open to this idea. Uh, let us know what you guys think right now. Round two, pick number 48. This is your final chance to get your picks in. Quay Walker, Roger McCreary, Jahan Dotson, Bernard Raymond. You can type your picks in the comments uh, and also vote in the live poll. We'll give you guys about 30, 45 more seconds. Jahan Dotson is running away with it, but uh, you can steal the pick. If someone wants to send in $100, uh, you can make the pick yourself. Maybe you want uh, Bernard Raymond or someone else, or maybe you want Dotson and you just want to make sure that no one's going to make a comeback. $1 equals two votes. $5 equals 15 votes. $20 equals 50 votes. And then uh, for 100 bucks, you can make the pick yourself. And these Super Chat rules apply for every single round. Vibin dropped 50 bucks for the first pick, so we had to double that cost up to 100 uh, But, uh, hey, uh, $100, and you can make the pick right now. So give you a few more seconds uh, and let these votes come in. And then uh, – We'll, uh, we'll get this thing going in the uh, comment section right now. What are you guys saying? Uh, Detroit versus everybody. Guess who? Don Burr is back on that front. All right. I think we got enough votes here. Uh, Jahan Dotson running away with it. No one's going to buy the pick. So we'll go ahead and announce that here. The Penn State wide receiver, Jahan Dotson, is the selection here in round two, pick number 48. Uh, speed, speedster uh, can be a punt returner for you. You can play some slot, play some outside. I don't think he's going to fall to 48, but, hey, if he does, I am definitely here for it. It's had a good season last year, 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, I like him a lot. Uh, I think at 39, he would be a pretty good value selection. At 48, it would be an unbelievable uh, home run pick. Uh, we'll have to just cut that out then. Uh, but uh, Jahan Dotson is the pick, round two, pick number 48. By the way, Miles Boykin was just picked up on waivers by the Pittsburgh Steelers, so he will not be joining the Chicago Bears. Uh, so, hey, it happens. I wondered if someone would pick him up, and that turned out to be the case. All right, so here are the two picks so far in our fan-led mock draft. We'll cook up our uh, next uh, pick here in just a few moments after uh, Jahan Dotson is the pick here. Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M and Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. Now we move forward to pick number 71. And uh, some interesting players on the board. I'm just going to start uh, listing these out uh, for uh, my producers uh, to hear me. George Pickens, the wide receiver out of Georgia, still available somehow. Uh, this mock is falling really good for the Bears. Jalen Petrie, the defensive back out of Baylor. So George Pickens, wide receiver, Georgia. Jalen Petrie, that's P-I-T-R-E, out of Baylor. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see. Myjai Sanders, the edge out of Cincinnati, is on the board as well. And then we've got... Who else should I throw in here? Let's throw Martin Emerson, this, the cornerback out of Mississippi State. Martin Emerson out of Mississippi State. So those are the four options here. Edge. So we'll get those picks up in just a second, helping my producers out here. Make sure that spelling is good. DE is fine as well. He is out of Cincinnati, so... There you go. Those are going to be the options here. Again, Super Chat rules. If you uh, send in a dollar, you get two votes. For five bucks, you get 15 votes. For $20, you get 50 votes. And then for $100, you get to make the pick outright. Maybe someone you don't want uh, the Bears to draft is running away with it, and you say, no, I'm stealing the pick. Or maybe you just want to be like, hey, I want to make the pick. I'm the GM for this mock draft. So there you go, $100 uh, to do just that. So those are the Super Chat rules for this one. And uh, we will uh, find out who ends up being the selection here in round three with the number 71 overall pick in this fan-led mock draft for the Chicago Bears. Speaking of which, who is your favorite player in this year's mock or er, in, in this year's N NFL uh, draft? Uh, two T's. Hang on one second. Yes. Oh no, just one. 
Favorite player in this year's NFL draft? Let's see. Pickens too easy from GD West. I think he's talking about this next selection. Mm -hmm. The live poll is up, so start voting on this selection. Remember, 100 bucks if someone wants to steal the pick. Chris Olave from Ron. Jordan Davis is my favorite as well. You can also start loading up your questions. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. We're about to uh, get into a mailbag here. So use hashtag Bears or Super Chat. L3 is perfectly fine. Should be in there. Let's see. Chris Olave coming in. Bears aren't going to get him, though, unfortunately. Use hashtag Bears or Super Chat, and we will... Get to your questions coming up here in just a second. Right there on screen. That is the way to get your questions in, and we will uh, answer as many as we possibly can. Before we do that, just so you guys can visually see it, these are the options in round three. George Pickens, the receiver out of Georgia. Jalen Petrie, the safety out of Baylor. Myjai Sanders, the defensive end, the edge out of Cincinnati. And then Martin Emerson, the cornerback out of Mississippi State. So those are the options here. And uh, after this Q&A, uh, we will uh, take a look and see who wins this round. All right, here we go. Mailbag time on Bears Now. You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. Harrison Graham here to answer all of your questions on today's mailbag. So get them in, hashtag Bears or Super Chat, and we'll answer as many of them as we possibly can. Vibin sends in another $5 Super Chat. Field sounds much more confident and happy. Love to see it. Yeah, he met with the media on Tuesday and – that sounded like QB1, right? You had the whole debacle last year of tweeting out the photo of Andy Dalton as QB1. Then you draft Justin Fields. Then you don't give Fields any reps in camp. And then Dalton gets hurt in week two. We all know the rest of the story. Uh, yeah, that's your starting quarterback. That's your uh, leader of this team, at least starting to mold into that role. I'm excited, and I can't wait to see how this thing plays out. Don Burr with the $2 Super Chat. Kayvon or Aiden will have Bustin running for his life. Uh, that's funny. Don Burr, our resident Lions fan, he sends in super chat, so we got to get him on the show. Uh, we'll see uh, how the Lions screw up this pick this year. Graydon Hislope, what do you think about David Bell? He's also available right now, but I like some other options better. <laughs> you know, I, without getting obsessed with the testing, his testing's pretty poor, but good route runner gets open. Uh, I think Allen Robinson, he's like a poor man's Allen Robinson to me. Uh, and him, him and Fields didn't really mesh. That doesn't mean they wouldn't have with another full offseason. Uh, but uh, I think in round three, it's fine. Um, you know, I wouldn't take him in the second round, though. RJ Kingshark, who could possibly fall to number 39 and number 48? Sangray Kim is a Packer fan, FGB. Get the FGBs flowing in the comments if you can't stand the Packers. We all know what the F stands for. Uh, Sangray Kim, uh, is he actually or are you just trolling because he hates Justin Fields? Uh, who knows? Who actually knows? As far, as far as guys that could fall to 39 that I would like to see, Kenyon Green, who we took in the fan-led mock draft, I think it's possible. I don't think it's likely, but maybe Traylon Burks or Jahan Dotson, one of those receivers, falls. Uh, they can't all go in the first round, right? At least in theory, you would think not. Um, Tyler Linderbaum, maybe? He's a little undersized. Teams, uh, some teams are concerned. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be tricky. I mean, I wonder if polls would move up to like 34, 35 just to secure one of these guys that doesn't go around one. We'll see what happens. Tyler Coffey, uh, what trade for the Bears will make sense to get more picks? I mean, the guy that would get you the most picks beyond like Fields or Roquan is probably Robert Quinn. I think you can get a day two pick for him, third round pick probably. You got a second for um, – Khalil Mack, uh, could you get a third for Robert Quinn? I think it's possible. Um, you know, if you wanted to trade David Montgomery, you could probably get a third or a fourth or something like that. Um, you're not going to trade Jalen Johnson, uh, but he would probably give you like a second. Uh, you've got some dudes, but a lot of the guys that would get you draft capital are guys you want to keep. So, you know, outside of like a Robert Quinn, uh, I don't think there's a lot of guys on this roster that's going to get you a lot of draft picks. Bob Addy, could the Bears trade for Baker Mayfield as Justin Fields insurance? Oh, goodness, Bob Addy. You're going you're gonna to mix it up with some fans, huh? Well, let me just say this. I have no interest in Baker Mayfield. Number one, I think Justin Fields has the potential to be much better than Baker, both as a player and as a leader of a franchise. Uh, and number two, why do you need Baker Mayfield? 
you're starting Justin Fields this year, and uh, you have a backup quarterback in Trevor Simeon. Not that Simeon's better than Baker, but trading for Baker, his cap hits $18 million. You're you're not gonna you know you're not gonna take on his contract, so no interest. If he got cut and you wanted to bring him in as a backup, I guess, but even then, I don't think that makes sense for the Bears at all. Uh, so I'm not interested in Baker. I don't think a lot of you are, but apparently at least one Bears fan is. Are you all in on Justin Fields? Because I am. Type me if you are. Doesn't mean it's going to work out. Doesn't mean he's going to the Hall of Fame or anything crazy like that. But I believe in his talent. I believe in his ability. And I'm excited to see him play this year. Daniel, next up here on our mailbag. How many smoking Jays will you give the Bears trading into the first round? One, uh, it's not impossible. It's never impossible. But it, it's low percentage. Uh, just the Bears don't have the draft capital. And... The Bears need not just quality players. They need volume, too. They still have 29 open roster spots. They have 61 players on the roster. So they got to they gotta get dudes. You, you don't want to have 28 <laughs> undrafted free agents, so 25, whatever. So uh, a chance, Daniel, but a low chance. Lucas praying a bit open-ended. Do you think Eberflus is the right coach for the Bears? It's hard to say, right? Like, uh, over time, I've become – you know, I've liked to hire more and more. I mean, you listen to him talk. He sounds like a leader. He knows football well. Uh, he understands both sides of the ball because when you defend offenses that long, you've seen it all. Um, you know, I think there was a reason why a lot of us wanted the Bears to go offense with the head coach. But uh, I like the staff he put together. I think he's got good leadership traits. The quarterback head coach connection is the most important on a football team. If him and Justin Fields get along and are, and are on the same page, then uh, I think this team will have a chance. Quinn for Defensive Player of the Year. There's a lot of smoke about drafting Logan Hall. What do you think? I, I've seen a little, you know, some ideas around that. Uh, I'm not opposed. Uh, 48, pick 48. You know, you could talk me into it depending on how the draft board plays out. Uh, if he's somehow there at 71, I think it'd be even better. But uh, I think that's fairly unlikely. Uh, not opposed to it. I think it depends on what you do uh, with some of your other picks. Uh, I, I would not pick him first per se, you know, uh, if you're picking him at 39, that means you really like the player and the board uh, has fallen to where you feel like he's clearly your best player on your board and you just feel like you have to take him. Uh, subscribe both to our Bears Now channel, which is obviously what you're watching right now, youtube.com slash Bears Now. We just crossed 46,000 subscribers, daily free Chicago Bears videos, but also to our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV, approaching 300,000. We're going to be live for all seven rounds of the NFL draft. You'll see me live on Chat Sports, uh, youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV. You'll see me live on Bears now from time to time as well. Rounds one through seven. We're not punting on day three like a lot of other networks will. Uh, and by the way, if nothing else, go support and subscribe to Chat Sports because without Chat Sports, uh, our Bears only channel would not be possible. It would not exist. Uh, so go subscribe. We would appreciate it. NFL Draft coming up soon. So hit that big red button and mark your calendars. Thursday, April 28th is round one. Danger in the chat. Any wide receivers you would trade for? If so, then who? Um, we talked about during our rumors, uh, portion on Tuesday, uh, <laughs> uh, quite the photo here, by the way, uh, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, AJ Brown, maybe they're a little unhappy with their contract situations. Could you swoop in and make a major trade? You could, it's going to cost you a lot of capital and obviously a lot of money. Uh, but, uh, at the same time, if you're, you know, if you feel like one of those guys can mesh with fields for the next decade then you should at least be doing your due diligence and seeing how much that would cost. Nixon Pample, what late round safety prospects do you like to replace Eddie Jackson? I like, uh, I don't know if it's late round, but Kirby Joseph's a player I like out of Illinois. JT Woods is a guy I like out of Baylor. Um, trying to think of other day three uh, safety pro or, uh, prospects. It's kind of tough when you get that deep into the draft. I guess I can look. Uh, by position here. Uh, oh, Brian Cook is a guy out of Cincinnati I like. Another name to keep in mind, Verone McKinley out of Oregon. Uh, played with Thomas Graham as well, so a little bit of a connection there. Shout out your favorite Bears player in the comments. Maybe it's Eddie Jackson, but I doubt it. Let us know who your favorite Bears player is, current or all time. I don't really care. Uh, I just want to see you guys uh, rep your favorite Bears player. 
Alex Hernandez, would you move up to 31 if Zion is there? Bengals seem like a team that is stacked. Uh, yeah, look, Zion uh, Johnson is a player I'm very interested in. He can play guard. He can play center. He's powerful. Uh, he would start right away at right guard, I believe, for this team. So, um, you know, could you get up to 31 by trading 39 and, you know, a fifth? I doubt it. You'd probably have to send 71 as well. So, you know, that, that's where it becomes tricky. That's where not having a fourth-round pick kind of hurts. So uh, you got to factor all these things in. Trade Talk Sports, do you think the Bears should get George Pickens or Sky Moore? And I think Chris Olave might go to Green Bay. I hope not. F the Packers. Definitely possible. Packers will probably be drafting at least one receiver in the first round. Uh, but I think Chris Olave might be gone by then. He might go top 15 uh, pretty high in this draft. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, I like George Pickens. I like Sky Moore. I'd be fine with either of them. They have different skill sets, but I think they would both fit in pretty well. Logan Hall or Perrion Winfrey, Kenny asks. Perrion Winfrey, more of a traditional kind of three-tech type, but Logan Hall, I think his versatility is pretty interesting. Um, you can play him at edge. You can play him at that three-tech spot. Um, I like him being able to move around. He could even drop into coverage from time to time. Uh, he's he, he's a fun player. I would probably lean Logan Hall. TD Productions, do you think Christian Watson will be available at 39? Maybe. I've seen a lot of mocks with him going first round, which, by the way, he should not go first round. I get the skill set, big, physical, fast, but he doesn't track the ball that well down the field. He drops a lot of passes. His drop rate is over 12% compared to George Pickens, which is less than 3%. That's a massive difference. He's pretty raw. Like, he, 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 he's going to take some time to develop. And, you know, he's ultimate boomer bus guy. He could be a 15-year pro or out of the league in four years. It's going to be interesting. I, I would go in a different direction in general with him. I'm not as high on him. I think the risk factor is too high for a team that needs to hit on these picks. Uh, but that's just my two cents. Quinn again, bore him to play or played left tackle today. Oh, interesting. So we're filming this mailbag on our live show on Tuesday. Uh, Tevin Jenkins at right tackle. Larry Borum at left tackle. Fascinating. Very, very fascinating. Thank you for that update. Amos Goldberg, Thomas Graham was amazing at the end of 2021. Why not trust him now as a solid CB2? It's just not a lot of reps, man. I like what I saw too, but you're telling me like two, two and a half games worth is like, yep, he's our starting CB2. I'd love for that to be the case because then you're like you're kind of set at corner with Tavon Young in the slot. You could draft a guy you know in the fifth round or something for depth, but I just I'm not I'm not certain enough. I I'd love to be wrong. I'd love Thomas Graham to be that guy because then shout out Ryan Pace, you found a starter in the sixth round, but uh, Nagy didn't play the guy enough. I don't think we know nearly enough about him. Edwin Bond, what is your opinion on the Bears not trying to go all in on DK Metcalf? A couple things. I don't think Seattle's really looking to trade him. And B, he's going to cost a lot. Bears don't have a first-round pick. So, you know, I don't think Ryan Poles wants to trade future first-round picks because uh, he already inherited a team that didn't have a first-round pick this year. So you don't want to dig that hole deeper and draft capital. So I think those are some reasons why uh, they have not pursued that at least deeper up to this point. Appreciate you guys for submitting your questions. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's at HGramNFL at HGramNFL on IG, and we will uh, be sure uh, to uh, answer more questions over there. By the way, almost at 3,000 followers. Once we get there, we'll do a Bears Now IG Live. All right, uh, let's get back to our fan-led mock draft. Round three, pick number 71 options, your final chance to get your votes in. George Pickens, the receiver out of Georgia. Jalen Petrie, the safety out of Baylor. Myjai Sanders, the defensive end out of Cincinnati. And then Martin Emerson, the cornerback out of Mississippi State. Uh, those are the options. And here are the Super Chat rules. If you send in a $1 Super Chat, uh, you get two votes. If you send in $5, you get 15 votes. For $20, you get 50 votes. So you can kind of you know, sway the vote pretty heavily there. And then also, uh, if you send in uh, $100, you can steal the pick. The pick's yours. Maybe someone's running away with it, and uh, you guys get to make the pick. So there you go. Uh, oh, we also got a Rumble rant of $5. So that's going to count for 15 votes from Q Carrito. Raymond has slept on. Also, this can be my dono for the next pick. Yeah, I appreciate that. 
Okay, he's saying Pickens. So that's 15 more votes for George Pickens. Appreciate that uh, from uh, Q Carrito. Uh, that is outstanding. So final chance to get your votes in if someone wants to steal the pick. Going to cost $100. We'll give it a few more seconds, uh, and then we will make the selection here. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go in a landslide, getting 63% of the vote. That is Georgia wide receiver George Pickens. And I'll be honest, the way this mock is falling, it couldn't fall better for the Bears. They've had good options in every round. They've pretty much been around ahead of schedule. They've had a guy like Kenyon Green be available in round two when he could go round one. Jahan Dotson available in round two. He could go round one. George Pickens available in round three. He could go round two. Uh, now, unlike some of the other receivers, he's had some injuries, uh, and obviously uh, that is a concern, but he's big, physical, fast. He can really high point the football, vertical threat. I think he fits in with what the Bears want to do as an offense. Uh, if you get him at number 71, I mean, the value is off the chain uh, for Chicago. So I think this would be a fantastic pick. And look at the look at what you guys are doing with the fa fan-led mock. Uh, I couldn't have done a better mock myself so far. Great work. Kenyon Green, Jahan Dotson, and George Pickens. Uh, let's go win the NFC North, baby. Pump the brakes, pump the brakes. But, uh, hey, this is, uh, this is fantastic. So we'll get uh, – the way we're going to do this next round – Picks 148 and 150, no fourth-round picks, so we'll jump to round five. Since the Bears have two two out of three picks, we're going to loop these two together. So here are the four players available uh, for this round. Ooh, fan favorite, uh, Tyquan Thornton, the wide receiver out of Baylor. We'll go ahead and list him as one. Uh, also, we got uh, – let's see, and I can slack these to you, uh, Jack. Uh, there's Tyquan uh, Thornton. Uh, Let's go John Ridgeway, the defensive tackle out of Arkansas. He will be another option here. We can go, let's see, scroll a little bit here. Michael Wright, the corner out of Oregon. Weird spelling, Jack, so check that. And then Chris Paul, or wait, should I do the punter, Matt Areza? I'm doing the punter. Someone might buy this pick. Matt Areza on the board. So the way this will work, the top two vote getters will get uh, will be the selections at 148 and 150. So if someone wants to send in a hundred dollar super chat, you get to make one of the picks. That means the second pick could still still be available for you guys to make. These are the four picks: Baylor wide receiver Tyquan Thornton, John Ridgeway, the defensive tackle out of Arkansas, Michael Wright, the cornerback out of Oregon, and then San Diego State punter Matt Areza. And you guys joke. Kind of need a punter after losing Pat O'Donnell. I forget the guy's name that they have on the roster, but he's kind of a career journey, man. Say what? Defensive tackle, Arkansas. So those are going to be the four options here. This this will be fun. This will be fun. He's a corner out of Oregon. So there you go. There are the picks. There are the picks. What are you guys saying in the chat? Martin says Areza. Yes. SDSU. No OT. Chris Paul's on the board, Joey, but I wanted to go with the punter. How about, you know what? Replace Thornton with Chris Paul, the offensive tackle. We don't need another receiver. Uh, Tulsa. So communicate that to Chris Paul, PD, instead of uh, Tyquan Thornton. OT out of Tulsa. Yep. All right, the poll is up, so make the picks. The top two vote-getters, again, will get uh, these two picks, 148 and 150. The Bears have two out of three selections in round five, so we're just going to loop those two together. Get those votes coming in. Matt Areza winning the vote so far, but it's close. You guys want the punter. The punter. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Get those votes in. We have the the graphic ready. All right, we'll show the options on screen in a second. Here's what the Bears have so, sh done so far. So if you're just joining us, make your pick wisely. Uh, Kenyon Green, the offensive lineman out of Texas A&M. I think he starts at right guard right away if you get him.
Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver out of Penn State, was still there at 48. Great value and even better value. George Pickens at 71, the receiver out of Georgia. So you've handled a starting offensive lineman. You've gotten two, I think, starting caliber wide receivers. So you're good there. You're good there. You can kind of go best player available from here on out. Uh, you could certainly use another offensive lineman. You could go cornerback um, uh, with Mike Michael Wright here if you want. Uh, or draft the punter, Matt Areza, who, hey, real talk, if he's going to be a, a starting punter for over a decade, then probably worthy of a draft pick. Just saying. You have to punt the ball sometimes, as you Bears fans are very familiar with, unfortunately. All right, name a player you would trade up for in the comments. And then we're also going to get – uh, we're going to get to one more mailbag, so hashtag Bears or Super Chat. We'll get to those questions uh, here in a second. Uh, we will uh, get to those momentarily, hashtag Bears or Super Chat, but also name a player you would like to trade up for if you were the Chicago Bears. Caleb says, good draft. Hey, good job, uh, Bears fans. Uh, Chris Olave from Ashigo, he'd like to trade up for him. Someone says, bro, if Pickens is there at 71, I'm hat. I don't know what hat means, but uh, there you go. Josh Loeb. Yeah, pass. Uh, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks. Name a player you want to trade up for in the comments. And I uh, already got a lot of votes coming in, so we're good. We can go into our mailbag here. Oh, yeah, I'll show the Super Chat menu. Reminder, uh, $1 Super Chat equals two votes. $5 Super Chat equals 15 votes. Q Carrito sent in another $5 on uh, Rumble, he votes for Chris Paul. So that's 15 votes, so that may impact things. Uh, definitely could. I think that puts Chris Paul in front, Jack. Uh, yeah, because three are tied. It's going to come down to three guys. Sorry, John Ridgeway. We'll see you. Um, but uh, get your votes in. It's so close. If you want to get guarantee your guy gets drafted, 100 bucks. just saying. $100 super chat to get – your votes in for this round. There you go. Matt Areza, Michael Wright, Chris Paul, John Ridgway. Those are the selections. And uh, we'll see how it all plays out here in Bears Now. Did uh, something. Oh, okay, we're good. We are good here. It's close. Keep voting. We're going to do one more uh, mailbag segment. So get your questions in. And then we'll see how the vote plays out. Uh, $100. And uh, the pick is yours. Top two vote getters. Will be Chicago Bears. Bottom two will not. All right, mailbag time coming up here on Chicago Bears now. What's going on, Bears fans? Before we jump into today's Bears mailbag where you guys submit your questions and I answer them, follow me on Instagram. We are closing in on 3,000 followers. I'm at 2,941 as I film this. Once we get to 3,000, I'm going to cook up another Bears Instagram Live. I would like to do one before the NFL draft, talk some prospects, kind of, you know, take a closer look, deeper dive into what Ryan Poles and company might do. So follow me. You can always ask me your questions over there as well. At HGramNFL, 60 away, less than 60, 59 to be exact. Give me a follow, and then we'll answer all of your questions. All right, welcome into the show. I'm Harrison Graham. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and appreciate you guys for submitting your questions by either sending hashtag bears or by super chatting. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Funk bringer in another universe where we could trade up for a lave, then he and Fields ball out like Burrow and Chase. Do you think this would change the face of the draft going forward? Like, would this become a theme of drafts where like you team up receivers with their college quarterbacks? Or do you mean with the Bears specifically? Um, I'll go through each scenario. If it, you're talking about changing the face of the Bears, then absolutely. Uh, you get Chris Olave in here. That would be, I think, a game changer uh, with Justin Fields. But there's a lot of good receivers in this draft. Would this be a common theme for drafts moving forward? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, the Burrow Chase one was so unique that they went from picking top five to going to a Super Bowl. So uh, I don't think that would happen all the time. But you never know. Wolf Rome 37, is there any names you're keeping an eye on with the remaining free agents? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, Eric Fisher is a name I'm monitoring. I think he could come in and play left tackle, uh, which, by the way, at Bears minicamp, Tevin Jenkins started at right tackle, Larry Borum at left. They don't think Larry Borum's a starting caliber left, and if they're going to keep Jenkins at right, uh, then Eric Fisher could come in and be a starter. So I think that's uh, something to monitor. Uh, so keep that in mind. 
Martin Melhus, uh, how about picking up a raisin around five or six? But he might be gone by the sixth, and he is a unique, uniquely excellent punter. He's the best college punter I've ever seen. I mean, the guy had multiple 80-yard punts, and they weren't, like, on just crazy bounces. Like, he can just absolutely launch the ball uh, as a uh, punter. Um, if the Bears had less needs, I'd say draft him in the fifth round. But I don't know if you can do that. I, I wouldn't completely hate it because you know what you're getting. You know you're getting a damn good punter that's going to start every single Sunday. Uh, but it is a punter, so you got to factor that in. Chris Osby, should the Bears trade their number 39 and Quinn to the Browns for 44 and 78? So you're moving down five picks, picking up 78 by giving away Quinn. Yeah, you're moving down from 39 to 44. You're picking up a third. So you're kind of trading Quinn for a late third, essentially, because you're moving down in round two and picking up a late third. I don't hate it, but you're getting an extra day two pick. I don't know. How about you keep 39 and you just trade Quinn for 78? I don't think you have to move down. I think that's fair. Bear Downs, 97. What are your thoughts on taking uh, Dane Rosenthal from Kentucky and Mike Rose from Iowa State in the fifth or sixth round? Uh, I know Rose better out of Iowa State. Uh, both day three guys. Look, you get into day three in the draft, it's really, you know, you can go one of two ways. Guys that you think can contribute right away on, like, special teams or more project guys. Guys that could become starters, kind of boom-bust type of players that fall into day three for various reasons. Bad combines, character concerns, lack of experience, whatever the case may be. Uh, those are kind of your two strategies. But uh, I am fascinated to see kind of what we learn from Ryan Poles on what those strategies are. John Robinson, is there a chance the Bears trade into round one on draft night? And if so, for what player? I, we answered a similar question on our other mailbag. I do think there's a chance. Uh, I think it's one smoking J, small chance. These are three names that I would consider trading up for if they fell like late in the round one. I'm talking 25 or later. Traylon Burks, the receiver out of Arkansas. Zion Johnson, uh, the offensive lineman out of Boston College. Tyler Linderbaum, the center out of Iowa. Sure, Chris Olave, but he's not falling to the mid-late 20s. Better chance he goes top 10 or 15 than falls to 25. Um, so I didn't even include him here, but sure, if he falls, then obviously he would be on that list. These are guys I would consider trading up for, but you'd have to really feel good about whatever that player is, about kind of changing the direction of a franchise, and no draft pick is guaranteed, so I still think it's unlikely. Now, name a player that you would trade up for. You're in charge, you like a player, but you don't think he'll fall to 39. Who are you trading up for? Let us know in the comments uh, who that draft prospect is. Trey Talk, I know there is not a high chance, but how many smoking Jays that Chris Olave falls to Chicago to team up with Fields? If this happens, I would lose my marbles. His chances of falling to 39, I would say, are very close to zero at this point. Um, every mock draft now has him going like 16 at the worst, 17. Uh, he's pretty much a top 20 lock unless, uh, you know, this, you know, some <laughs> – you know, injury occur in workouts. Like, you know, we saw David Ajabo get hurt at his pro day. We obviously hope that does not happen. Does some, you know, yeah, some skeletons in the closet emerge, you know, that forces him to, you know, fall off team's draft. Board. I mean, it would take something catastrophic for him to fall to the Bears at 39. Mark Sarukonian. Uh, we likely won't get impact players with the remaining free agents out there. We just need bodies. Thoughts on bringing back Marquise Goodwin. He has speed, and the price will be right. Yeah, one-year vet, man. I'm totally fine with that. Number four type of receiver, uh, round out the roster type of signing. Uh, I disagree that you can't find guys that can impact. Like, I think Eric Fisher would be an impact player because he would start at left tackle. I think if you wanted to sign Tyron Matthew, he would be an impact player. Uh, there are guys out there. It doesn't mean they're going to go get them. Uh, but uh, if they wanted to, they could. Um, but, yeah, I think good one on a cheap one-year deal as a depth receiver would be perfectly fine. Justin Donahue, do you think Justin Fields actually wants out, or is that false? It's completely false. It's a made-up story. It's fabrication. It was more of an idea. Yeah, fake news. Zero smoking jays. Someone said, I think his name's Connor Orr of Sports Illustrated, Justin Fields should demand a trade. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> like... Uh, it's a ridiculous idea, and it's uh, it's not true whatsoever. 
Uh, follow us on Rumble. We crossed 500 followers, trying to get to 1,000 as soon as possible. Daily Bears news and rumors videos over there. Some exclusive content. Plus, you can listen to our episodes while using other apps. You get a text message while you're watching this video. Uh, you don't have to pause it. You can click into the text, respond to that person. Video is still going to be playing. So you're going to be able to hear what we're breaking down around the Chicago Bears. You can use it podcast style like that. And uh, that's not the case on YouTube. So it's a nice benefit of Rumble. Rumble.com slash Bears. Now, go give us a follow over there. Tyler Coffey, uh, what would you trade for Terry McLaurin? What would I trade or what is proper value? I mean... I'd probably trade both my seconds for him, but I still think Washington would say no. Both seconds and a third next year, maybe? Something like that? A second this year, a second next year, and a third this year, two, three, two twos and a three? I don't want to trade a future first, I don't think. Now, if it happened, I'd probably talk myself into it because you're getting a stud of a receiver and you're going to sign him to a long-term deal. Uh, but I'm just kind of projecting what Ryan Poles wants to do, and he wants draft picks, so keep that in mind. Amos Goldberg, Green Bay drafting Desmond Ritter. I, that'd be weird if they did. Uh, I would hope they learned from the Jordan Love error. Um, but uh, I do like Ritter better than Jordan Love, so you never know. If you think Aaron Rodgers is going to retire after this year and Jordan Love's not the answer, then sure, you could if you're Green Bay. But, uh, hey, we should hope that they do, that they waste a first-round pick on another backup quarterback. Nixon Pample, what cornerback prospects do you like to play with Jalen Johnson. Guys that I think the Bears could actually get, like they're not going to get Derek Stingley, for example, but Kyler Gordon out of Washington. Uh, I like Roger McCreary, but I think he's a nickel, and you just signed a nickel, so I don't think he makes as much sense. Um, I think Tariq Woolen in like the third round would be interesting. He's a freak athlete out of UTSA. Um, I know I'm missing at least one guy. Kyer Elam out of Florida, I think he would be interesting at 39 or 48 if he fell, which he could. Uh, so there's a few guys, but not the deepest corner class for sure. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that big red button here on YouTube. Trying to get to 47,000 subs ASAP. Uh, would love to get there before the draft, but we just cost 46 k Maybe by the end of the draft. Maybe that's more realistic. Hit that sub button. Daily Bears news, rumors. Uh, we're publishing content on a daily basis. A lot of the time we're doing two videos a day now. So tap in for that. YouTube.com slash Bears now. Time for a few more here. Lars Newman, what about uh, veteran options for wide receiver like Julio Jones or Emmanuel Sanders? Any buzz around them? Not much. Uh, I'm open to it, though. I think in general the Bears want to go younger, but one-year deals don't really impact your future, so I'd be fine with it. Julio's obviously dealt with some injuries, so has Sanders, and he's uh, both have declined as well. But, you know, one-year, $5 million for one of those guys. Julio's probably going to be a little more than Sanders, but – uh, I, I'd be I'd be open to it. I, I'm definitely not shutting the door on that. I think those would be like post draft signings. Like say the Bears don't spend a high pick on a receiver for whatever reason, then I could see them signing one of these players. Craig Ferguson, should the Bears sign Antonio Brown? Go Lions? No, and I see what you did there because uh, you want chaos in Chicago. Absolutely not. F A B. We don't want Antonio Brown in Chicago. Uh, but you and Don Burr would love it, Craig. So uh, I can certainly respect the hustle. Now name a player you don't want the Bears to draft. I don't want the Bears to sign Antonio Brown, but name a player you don't want the Bears to draft. Like, you know, maybe there's a guy that's been linked to the Bears and you're like, yeah, I don't really like that guy. Honestly, my player, I wouldn't mind him at 48 or 71. I don't want Christian Watson with the Bears first pick, though. I think he's got too much, too much bust potential. He's too raw for me. Uh, I think a team that's more set right now should draft him and let him develop. Uh, I want a guy that can impact the game right away for sure. And maybe he can, but there's too much risk involved. I don't want Christian Watson at pick 39. Just my opinion. But, uh, hey, uh, maybe you guys think differently on that front as well. Let us know who you don't want the Bears to draft. Be sure to follow us here on IG as well, at HGramNFL. I mentioned off the top of the video, uh, once we cross 3,000 followers, which we're close to on my account, uh, I'll schedule another Bears Instagram Live. I would like to do one before the NFL draft. Uh, we're about 60 followers away, so give us a follow at HGramNFL. It's at HGramNFL. Got a couple more rumble rants, I'm being told. Here, Carrito again. 
Chris Paul now has 45 votes because Kier Carrito gave us another, two more $5 supers. And he wants Chris Paul. All right, so here's the deal. These are the options for the next two picks for the Bears. Chris Paul, John Ridgway, Michael Wright, Matt Arezzo. Um, Chris Paul is going to be one of them because he's leading the vote and he's getting 45 more votes. But if someone wants to buy the pick, they can still do that. So we're going to give you guys about another minute here for these two selections. Uh, here's the Super Chat menu. The Super Chat rules, the data for you guys. $1 Super Chat, if you make a pick, uh, you get two votes for that guy. 5 bucks is 15 votes. Uh, $20 is 50 votes. And then for $100, you get to flat out make the selection uh, for that pick. So uh, as of now, Chris Paul would be the pick. The second pick, Jack, is very close between Michael Wright, the cornerback out of Oregon, and Matt Areza, the punter out of San Diego State. Uh, just for mock draft purposes, I kind of hope it's a raise-up. But that's up to you guys. If you're just joining us, here are the picks that have been uh, made by you guys so far on our fan-led mock draft. Kenyon Green, the offensive lineman out of Texas A&M. Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver out of Penn State. And then Georgia wide receiver George Pickens in round three. No fourth-round pick, but now a pair of fifth-round picks at number 148 and number 150. So – Couple more seconds here. I think we know at least pick 148 here, right, Jack? We'll go ahead and get that one through, and then we'll give them a few more moments for pick 150 because it's still close. Uh, but round five, pick 148, it is Chris Paul, uh, not the point guard, the offensive tackle out of Tulsa. Uh, kind of the forgotten tackle out of Tulsa. We're getting all this Tyler Smith buzz, but I think Chris Paul in round five might actually be the better value uh, than uh, – you know, Tyler Smith in the second round. Not that Smith can't be good, but he's got some uh, technical concerns that he's got to improve on. Uh, only gave up two sacks, uh, has good size, 6'4", 323. Uh, I think he's light enough on his feet. I think you could get a swing tackle here with Chris Paul. I don't think you'd want him to start, but him and Larry Borum can compete, you know, for similar roles. We'll see uh, how each of those guys uh, fare uh, next to one another. I don't think Paul or Borum – uh, you should enter this year as one of those guys as a starter, but, you know, maybe one, Borum starts. Who knows? He got the left tackle reps at uh, minicamp uh, here on Tuesday. Uh, so you add him to the mix. Here are uh, the selections now so far. Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M, uh, the offensive lineman, of course. Uh, pair of receivers in Jahan Dotson and uh, George Pickens. And then uh, Chris Paul, the offensive tackle out of Tulsa. You know what's funny? Guess who the simulator uh, went at pick 149? John Ridgway. So we don't have to worry about it anyway. He's gone. John, you're gone. Uh, so you're not available. So it comes down. It's a two-man race for pick 150. Michael Wright, Matt Areza, if you haven't voted yet, this is your chance uh, to make the pick. You know what? Let's end the poll and just put it up there real quick. I just ended it. I'll just add it real quick. Pick number 150. CB, Ma Michael Wright, and punter, Matt Areza. Make the pick. Ooh, and we got a rumble rant for Matt Areza. Poll is up. Make the pick. We'll give you 60 seconds here. 60 seconds. Poll is up. Get your votes in. You want to go corner or punter? By the way, a little scouting report. On Michael Wright, we all know about Matt Areza. 5'10", 175, so a little undersized for an outside corner. Might have to play nickel. You've got Tavon Young. Uh, multiple Oregon players that have been drafted said of Wright, quote, he's a dog and he's better than all of us. Maybe Thomas Graham was one of the guys to say that. Uh, so that's a little bit interesting. Uh, good athlete, but uh, a little bit undersized there. So what's the pick? We got 30 seconds. Matt Areza's got a lead, and he's got uh, 15 extra votes. I think we're going punter, folks. I think we're going punter here in round five. Petey's loving this. Matthew Peterson, who's helping uh, count the votes here, uh, he's the biggest punter advocate that I know. So he's all in on this selection. Ten more seconds here. If someone wants to buy the pick, 100 bucks as well. But uh, – I think, we're, I think we're adding a punter. Let's ride. Matt Areza. Let's freaking get it, man. Are the final votes in? 
I think so. I think they are in. All right, here we go. The pick is in. Michael Wright made a late push, but it's not enough. Matt Areza, the punter out of San Diego State here in round five, number 150 overall. Jokes aside, it is a need. You could use a punter. Now, the more logical decision would be to just dra or sign a cheap free agent to compete with the other guy you have, who his name is drawing a blank on me because you lost Pat O'Donnell. But Matt Areza, there's a real chance he could enter the NFL and be the best punter in the league. Uh, now, that probably won't happen, but top five I think is very reasonable to expect. Uh, he will get drafted, make no mistake. Matt Areza will get drafted by a team, probably by a team that's more in win-now mode and just wants to upgrade at punter. Uh, but, uh, hey, he would fill a need for Chicago, and uh, he would be set at a starting position for the next decade plus, barring an injury. So Matt Areza, he is the selection here in round five. So here's where we are at this point in the mock. We have one more pick to go. Uh, let's recap a little bit, and then I'll get some uh, selections ready for you guys uh, before we sign off for our round uh, six pick coming up. Kenyon Green, round two, pick number 39. Jahan Dotson, you can just show up the way you had it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, a pair of receivers in round two and three. Uh, and then your pair of uh, fifth round picks, uh, Chris Paul, uh, the offensive uh, lineman out of Tulsa at number 148. And then it's Matt Areza at pick number 150, the one that just came in. One pick to go, so let's see. I'll get a couple players on the board here, uh, Jack. Uh, here's a Obena Ezi, offensive tackle out of TCU. You could use another lineman. Uh, let's see. Let's have a fun one here. Uh, Hassan Haskins, the running back out of Michigan. There's another one. Oh, man. Oh, this is a good one. Danny Gray, the wide receiver out of SMU. He's visited with the Bears. He's got good size and speed. And then let's go. Let's go with a. Oh, man. Thin pickings at this point. Is there a good safety out there? There really isn't. Uh. Obina Eze, O-B-I-N-N-A, Offensive Tackle, TCU. And then we'll go – I don't see an ASU guy on here, otherwise I would. <laughs> uh, let's just go those three guys. I don't like the rest of the board. We'll just do three players here. Three players here for pick 184. Offensive linemen. Running back, wide receiver, you guys make the pick. Pole is up. Make the selection here, and uh, it's up to you guys. We don't have any more content, so get your votes in for the next minute or two, and then uh, we'll recap the mock draft. Here's Matt Areza's, uh profile here. Average over 51 yards a punt. A long of 86. Holy smokes. Uh, didn't he run like a good 42? Didn't he run like a 4.7 or something? I think he did. Uh, not that that matters for a punter, but there you go. You get the best college punter in recent years in round five at pick number 150. Uh, we'll give you a minute from right now. One minute on the clock. Uh, we already got almost 60 votes in the live poll. Obena Ezi, the offensive tackle out of TCU, has 47%. Hassan Haskins, the running back out of Michigan, with 30%. And then Danny Gray, SMU wide receiver, with 25%. Uh, these are the options for the final pick of our Bears fan-led mock draft. And uh, we'll continue to do this every year. It's a lot of fun. 30 more seconds uh, for you guys to get your votes in. And, hey, if someone wants to buy the final pick, you can make the last pick of our fan-led mock. I'll tell you what, I'll go 50% off. 50 bucks for the final pick here if someone wants to make it. $50, and uh, the pick is yours. Uh, Q Carudo uh, sent in a dollar. He says, absolutely hate SMU, but it's Danny Gray. So that's two extra votes for him. Um, he also vote. I'll give him 15 votes on Gray, too, because he uh, sent in a $5 for the punter, Jack. So... Uh, Gray, uh, the punter actually has, uh, or excuse me, Gray has 17 more votes. So he's in second right now behind uh, Obina Ezi. 
But uh, unless someone buys the pick, looks like uh, we're heading to my alma mater for the final selection here in round six. Pick number 184, Obina Ezi. Looks like he is going to be the selection, and uh, yeah, that's it. Out of time here, so another offensive lineman off the board. It is Obina Ezi out of TCU. Transferred from Memphis this past year. Played fairly well. I think he's like a – he's a rotation tackle in the NFL. Uh, kind of like Chris Paul, you know, you, swing tackle is what you're hoping for. Competition, depth on your offensive line. Um, you know, maybe he becomes a starter down the road, but – Still has some uh, technical issues. Not the spryest offensive lineman, but I think on day three, a good value selection. I do believe he will get drafted uh, and probably in the fifth or sixth round. So there you go, the final pick. Older prospect as well, 24 years old. So to recap, the uh, Bears fan-led mock draft, here it is. Kenyon Green, Jahan Dotson, George Pickens. Those are your day two picks. Offensive line, wide receiver, wide receiver. Round five, Chris Paul, the lineman out of Tulsa. And then punter, Matt Areza out of San Diego State before going back to the offensive line with Obina Ezi out of TCU. So there you have it. Six picks in the books selected by you guys. And quite frankly, I think this is a good fan uh, – Fan-led mock draft. I would give you guys a solid A- minus here. I think this was pretty darn good overall. All right, before we sign off, fun, fun live stream today. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash bears now. Let's get to 47,000 subs as soon as possible. Also, follow us on Rumble, rumble.com slash bears now. Let's continue to grow over there. If you've already subbed on YouTube, easy way to support us is to follow us over there. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, Jack Lauderay, our producer, Matthew Peterson, our executive producer. They helped us navigate through some graphics uh, for the fan-led mock draft. So shout out to those guys in the chat sports team. We're going to sign off here on Bears Now. We'll see you soon here on the channel.